Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Live at the Emporium special edition. And my name is Ferdinand Soriano, and I am the co-founder of Emporium. And Emporium is a Philippine-made product, I'm sorry, Philippine-made and inspired product showroom in Global Business Center. And today, our job is to continuously create and provide content that's going to be helpful in creating Philippine-made uh, you know, opportunities or sales opportunities for Philippine made products, services and investments in uh, in the U.S. market. So today you are joining us live here. And I want to go ahead and without further ado, uh, introduce to you the host of this segment of special edition of Live at the Emporium. And, uh, I, and her, this is one of those series that we're doing. And I want to go ahead and introduce her. But before we do that, let me go ahead and and properly uh, set the mood for, or rather the tone for this special edition called uh, Investing in the U.S. Real Estate and Getting Permanent Resident Status in the U.S. It's a beautiful day No worries today Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, right now I am in Los Angeles. I'm back here. Last month we were, I was in Manila and we were talking about a different topic, but this time we're going to be talking about investing in U.S. real estate and getting a permanent resident status in the U.S. So, um, for the last 10 years or 23 years, actually, since 2010, I have been promoting retiring style um, and um, actually encouraging people to have a second option of retiring in the Philippines, being that it is English speaking country. And also um, we are very, very warm country and very affordable, you know. So there's actually a lot of Filipinos right now that are moving back and forth to the Philippines. And I call them Balik Balikan because they go there for three months or six months and they enjoy themselves. They buy another house. They put up a business there. They have additional uh, stream of income. And then they come back here and uh, enjoy their family, uh, visit their apos, doing all the other things that they would love to do here in the United States. So um, anyway, the topic tonight, we're going to be doing is investing in U.S. Um, with real estate and getting permanent resident status in the U.S. So there's a lot of Filipinos and foreigners who really, really would like to come in here, live here, uh, educate their kids here. And one of the options is to get a permanent visa. That way they're not considered foreigners, but actually residents here. And then they can expand their business here and bring their family and um, and uh, get uh, the visa so that they can be a resident here. So um, today 
I would like to introduce to you, unfortunately, um, Attorney Lorraine de Alesso uh, was struggling in the corner, in, in the border of Mexico today, and up to just about half an hour from now, he was able to uh, usher her client to the United States. So uh, we have to quickly find somebody else, and good thing that I have a good friend uh, who is an author of a book that talks about um, how to... Um, how to enter the United States. And uh, I asked him and tapped him to be our uh, guest speaker today. So let me introduce, um, na, we, I call him Don Nepo for short, but he is, uh, he is uh, his name is uh, Don. Hi, Don. He is Ferdinand. Hi. Hello. Nepo Fernando. <laughs> oh, Fernando. Uh, yeah. Fernando Nepo okay. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. So, um, Don, uh, I just met Don uh, through the phone. He was introduced by another uh, associate who is a realtor here in L.A. And uh, we talked over the phone and I mentioned to him about this show. So, uh, Don, um, can you talk a little bit about the book that you, um, that you wrote uh, about a few years ago? Uh, yes, I uh, wrote the book, uh, a guidebook entitled the way to enter America. It's a very comprehensive uh, uh, coverage of uh, the U.S. immigration and naturalization laws okay, and all the different kinds of uh, visas. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the reason why I wrote the book was that okay, uh, I was based in Hong Kong at that time and the Chinese were asking me, Don, how can we invest our money in the U.S.? and at the same time be able to stay there. Okay? Uh, and that means here in the U.S. Okay? So there are uh, a bunch of different kinds of visas that allow you okay, uh, to invest and eventually uh, stay here in the United States. Okay? One of the visas that is applicable okay, to Filipinos okay, is what they call a Treaty Investors Visa. The oh, Treaty okay. Investors... Yeah, done, yes. done. So let me do yes. this then. Uh, we prepared a little slide about you. Uh, I know it's really a quick one, but uh, here it is. Um, so uh, his name is Fernando Salvador Nepomuceno. I just want to make sure that I say that right. And he was an author <laughs> of The Way to Enter America, right? And it uh, you yes. sold a million, millions of, uh, of copies of this were sold so many years ago. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to page two and yeah, go ahead and uh, let's talk about your topic. Thank you so much. Mm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, let me, right, uh, let me introduce you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Oh, this good looking guy here in the picture is the same guy here on my left. But anyway, Fernando is also known as Don Napo. And he is a. Uh, U.S. Air Force veteran. He worked for E.F. Hutton, and he wrote a multi-million seller guidebook, The Way to Enter America. Uh, he's going to be talking about the E-2 Treaty Investors Visa and also the L-1 Visa for today, just to make sure that, you know, we just concentrate on these two topics so uh, our audience would uh, be able to to really uh, digest it. You know, I know you have so much in your book. And of course, later on, if they want a copy of your book, they can always reach out to you, right? So go ahead. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about yeah. the E-2 Treaty. Yeah, the, the E-2 uh, uh, Treaty Investors Visa okay, uh, requires a substantial amount okay, of investment okay, in the U.S. However, the term substantial is okay, depends on the investment that you are investing in. Mm -hmm. So if you were uh, in investing in a, a, a car dealership, obviously it would require a, a larger amount. However, if you were uh, investing in a, uh, a restaurant, okay, that, that would require a smaller amount. Okay? But the E2 visa okay, allows you to stay in the United States indefinitely. Indefinitely. That's very, very important to remember. Okay? Uh, that means to say you can stay here for as long as you're doing business. 
It doesn't matter whether the business is making money or they losing money. As long as you're operating it as a business, okay, you would qualify for that kind of visa. Okay? So an E2 visa, who can get that? Who, 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 can, who can do that E2 visa? Uh-oh. We lost him. Uh, okay. uh, the yeah. one that can get that. Okay, are, okay, uh, uh, it, you know, like uh, Fili uh, uh, Filipinos, because okay, uh, the Philippines has a trade treaty with the United States that allows them to get that E2 visa. Yeah, so I know that there's a lot of other countries that are uh, qualified, but let's focus on the Philippines since you are, most of our audience right now are Filipinos. But of course, you know, there are some other countries who, who have that kind of, uh, who can also uh, get the E2 uh, treaty investor visa. So, um, yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Well, the, 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 the nice part about this case. For most uh, Filipinos that want to bring, uh, for instance, their favorite nephew okay, or their favorite niece, okay, okay, they can get in on that uh, uh, E2 visa. Okay, and, okay, uh, uh, and then it doesn't matter whether the nephew or the niece is uh, uh, 21 years old or 25 years old, which is typically a, 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 a people that are rejected by the U.S. Embassy in Manila okay, as uh, somebody that's going to stay here indefinitely. Okay. So uh, that, that's, that's very, very important. Okay. It makes it easy for the person okay, to come and stay here legally okay, right, okay, in the United States. Don, do they need to work at that business? Uh, okay. Not necessarily. They, uh, they they need to be an owner okay, of the business, a part okay. owner at least, okay, a part owner of that business. So the business can be, for instance, okay, a, a a property management firm. In other words, okay, uh, if, if they uh, were like uh, buying real estate here okay, and managing okay, the, the, the 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 like uh, the, the properties. Okay, that's considered a, an ongoing commercial enterprise. Okay, okay. So that's perfect for those who want to invest here, buy properties, and then they can have, they can assign one of their family member to be the property manager. Yes, yes. Yeah, we yes. call them Patiwala yes. also, Patiwala, uh -huh. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So who else can come in here with the E2 visa? Okay, all right. Hey. Who else can come in here for a E2 right. visa? So if if I am, what about if I'm just going to come in here and be a, a coach or a lecturer or a, or, or a, you know, I, I will come in here and there's a lot of people. Uh, the, 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 the one that I like the most, okay, okay that's ap applicable, okay, to uh, uh, most uh, Filipinos, but uh, they aren't, uh, aware of this okay uh, the one that i apply uh, that i like the most is called okay, an l1 visa an intra company transferee visa okay, right? oh, okay. Uh, okay which uh, we will we'll be talking about okay, in the next uh, sex sex uh, section the l1 visa okay the l1 visa okay all right is okay, called intra company transferee uh, let me tell you what the requirements are to qualify for the L1 visa. Uh, the, the, the requirement is okay, that they have to have a business overseas okay, that has been in existence okay, for at least one year. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, compared, to the E2, compared to the E2, which does not require a business overseas, this, uh, the L1 visa requires that they have a business okay, Yeah, you're. I'm losing you. Maybe your uh, your uh, connection. You uh, you need to uh, fix your connection, uh, Don. We are missing you. Hey, all right. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Can you see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So. Uh, all right. Uh, 
visa. So the the L1 visa, okay, right, uh, is very easy to get. Again, it doesn't matter what the age requirement is. You know, in other words, we can have a a a, a new graduate, a fresh graduate, okay, uh, or okay, uh, somebody that's been in the, you know like uh, working uh, there for a while. But the requirement is okay, it allows them to transfer not just one. Okay, uh, but a multiple number of people. In other words, okay, uh, you can have brothers, sisters, and so on okay, to, to come in and get that L1 visa. But they the don't ones need that qualify to be part of the company. They don't need to be uh, part. Of, they don't need to be a part of the company. Maybe just a member. No, they do. They 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 do. Okay. Uh, they have to be an an exec an executive or a manager of the company. Okay. Well, what about the spouse uh, and the children of that manager? The the the, the spouse and the children okay, uh, can come, okay, right? Can come with them, okay, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, so, okay, uh, now it doesn't matter how many children they have, as long as they're minors, okay, right? That they would qualify, okay. But and they can but go here's to the thing: like a resident, they can go to school here, uh, like a resident. Yes, they, uh, they, they, uh, in fact, uh, some of the people that I helped, okay, all right, uh, some Filipinos that I helped, okay, uh, they, they wanted to enroll their children in USC or Harvard or, or something, okay, and then as a holder of an L1 visa, okay, they qualify as, okay, uh, they, they're considered local residents, okay. And in other words, if uh, you enroll your kids okay, at uh, Stanford, okay, instead of paying a foreign okay, student rate, yeah. Yeah. you would qualify okay, as a, you know, like, and, and it saves a lot of money. Okay? Yeah. It saves yeah. a lot of money. Okay. okay. All right. uh, well, that, that, yeah. Um, yes. uh, let me, let me um, uh, ask uh, Ferdinand to put up an uh, one little ad for us, you know, uh, hold on, okay? And then uh, we will come back. Born from our humble home and our desire to share true natural freshness with you, Lemon Cito Concentrate with honey is the best there is. Rich in vitamin C, Lemon Cito reinvents your mom's favorite tonic for a cold or sore throat into a delicious and nutritious drink. No additives, no artificial flavors, no preservatives, 100% natural. Lemoncito, deliciously nutritious. All right, we're back. Okay, Don. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, right. as you know, uh, Ferdy uh, from Emporium, he also promotes Filipino products. So this is one of the products that we are promoting. So tagging into that, uh, talking about the visa, so if you have a company in the Philippines, you know, and maybe you are a manufacturer, or maybe you are a distributor there, you know, or you have a school, you have a training school for nurses and CNAs and all that, uh, you can actually produce or uh, uh, get an L1 visa by opening a branch here, right? Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. So you can get an L1 visa uh, bring bring your family here who's going to manage it and also the executives who are coming coming here to manage it and their families. And so those families now can have an L1 visa and their kids, their family can be a resident here. That means if they want to work, if they want to go to school, they are considered um, a, res a resident um, uh, citizen here so they can enroll their kids just like anybody else who are citizens here, correct? Yes, yes. They, uh, uh, they, 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 they're considered residents okay, uh, for education purposes. Okay, for education purposes. Okay. Right. But, uh, mm -hmm. uh, all right. Uh, uh, let, 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 because of our limited time, uh, I want to show you okay, that when a person holds an L1 visa, okay, number one, the requirement is that as long as the person does not become a public charge in the United States. In other words, okay, right? when you open a business here, okay, you open a bank account, you, you put in money in that bank account, 
you're just simply transferring packet from one pocket to the other. You're not spending it. You're simply showing that the person that you are brought to America is not going to become a public charge. Okay, right? Now, here's a nice part about it. When a person is holding an L1 visa, okay, after about a year, okay, they would qualify for what they call an employment-based immigrant uh, visa, uh, the EB-1 visa. The oh. EB-1 visa okay, right, uh, would allow them uh, to get permanent residence here in the U.S. Okay? In other words, okay. in one year, they can become a, law, a, a, a lawful permanent resident, okay? lawful permanent resident immigrant, okay? right? Okay. So is there a minimum uh, that, uh, investment to qualify for L1? And, and no, no minimum. It, it, uh, uh, it, it used to be some people that I helped before, okay? uh, when they, op they put in around $35,000 okay, on a bank account, okay? that 35000 basically showed okay, that okay, while the uh, first day that transfer the income intra company transfer visa is in the United States. Okay, there is enough money uh, that they will be not become a public charge in the United States. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. So in other words, so the, compared to another visa that I was talking to you about, where in the real estate they have to spend uh, like one million dollar um, uh, to purchase uh, yes. property. That's a different kind of visa, right? Yes, yes. They uh, this this one here. They uh, they don't have to spend millions of bucks, okay? right? Okay. And then they can do any kind of business under the sun. In other words, okay, once they incorporate here, okay, uh, they can have a a, uh, a restaurant. That they can have a, a, a property management firm. Okay. Uh, they they can do any other kind of uh, business, okay? Right? Uh, they can own a gas station. They can even own a McDonald's, okay? Right? Okay? Uh, uh, here, okay? As well, now, th those things require a different kind of investment, okay? But, uh, uh, you know, like we could help okay, those people okay, uh, with that, okay? And, and, but the main thing is they would qualify for the L1 visa. That's, now, by the way, okay? Right. You just don't bring one person, you can bring say, up to 10 individuals as long as you can show uh, that you can afford to pay them say, while they're here, that as long as you're not going to become a public charge in the United yeah. States. They, okay. cannot, they, don't right. have to, they should not be a burden to the country. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So All right. Be, How much time? Can that be uh, anywhere in the United States? Anywhere in the United States, okay, okay. right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, okay, uh, go ahead. Yeah, so in other words, um, talking about in the real estate point of view, they can actually buy a property here, buy a house, and they'll be considered uh, not a foreign investor, but rather a uh, um, resident here where they can only put a down payment of 10% or 20% instead of 40%? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. I know you are a lender too. You have your NMLS na number and you are doing lending for uh, even for business and, uh, and uh, corporate. So um, as, knowing that in the back of my mind, I'm asking you, so if I have an L1 visa or an E2 visa, then if I'm going to borrow a portion of um, the, the, the amount of the investment that I have to do to purchase, let's say, a car dealership or a restaurant, um, real estate, you know, a, a, a property to put my business in, um, do I need what kind of loan to value or what kind of down payment do I need to put in? Can I qualify? Uh, we, we loans yeah we, we we can go uh uh we, we can go okay, generally it's uh with a, a 20 a, an 80 percent loan to value qual would qualify most people okay uh, it doesn't matter whether the person uh, it doesn't have anything to do 
with a person's citizenship. Okay? So a Filipino uh, uh, who, uh, let's say, uh, in, invests in, uh, uh, let's say, a, uh, a gas station okay? uh, and, and so on, okay? it can, 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 can generally get okay, about the, uh, 80% of the value of the, uh, of the gas station as a, uh, uh, a, a loan. In other words, they all, all they have to do is uh, put 20%. Okay? So right? they now, they, in many cases, they, we have clients okay, that also, uh, we have private money lending okay, that, okay, uh, so that uh, as well as they, they, they would go as high as they, uh, they, they base it on the cash flow okay, of the business. So uh, as, let's say if you were going to in, invest in uh, uh, buy a McDonald's here, for instance, okay, right? Uh, all, the revenue of McDonald's is uh, added on, and as, and as long as it shows okay, that okay, uh, that okay, it, it would uh, be qualify for servicing the loan, uh, that there's enough income okay, uh, to to uh, you know pay for the monthly in, uh, payment for the loan, that they would qualify. Okay? Uh, so. Uh, 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 you know, like uh, the uh, residential care home business, for instance, okay, uh, is, is something that uh, a lot of Filipinos also want to take advantage of. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I have a client who is uh, interested in doing that from Philippines, Bring uh, uh, come in here with his family because his family is like nurse, doctor, OT, you know, and he is a real estate broker. So if uh -huh. that family comes in here, then they can buy a property uh, and uh, apply for the L1 uh, in uh, no, uh, an E2 visa. Would that qualify as an E2 visa or an L1? If uh, they're coming uh, they, 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 they can qualify for an E2 visa, okay? but uh, uh, it, it, it takes some time, but the, 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 they would also qualify for an L1 visa. Okay? Uh -huh. uh, uh, there, there, there's a way of uh, structuring it, okay? right? Okay? Uh, you see, uh, the, the person can, uh, for instance, they, uh, 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 technically speaking, uh, the person can have a, a small sari sari store, okay, <laughs> to, to, to make it uh, blunt, okay, as long as that business is, uh, is registered and paying taxes, okay, it doesn't have to be making money, okay, the, 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 the important part is that the company in the U.S., has to be able to afford okay, uh, the intra-company transfer. Okay? It is not so much as the, yeah, the, the, the one in the Philippines. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, okay, okay. All right, well, you know what? Um, we are really brushed with time right now, and um, this is just a tickler, basically, you know, since it's a live stream, and we would like everybody to just uh, 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 reach out to us and... Um, ask us more information about this in more detail because everyone has different. But the good thing about this, the good news about it is that the getting a visa and um, uh, having to uh, afford to live here legally, uh, bringing your business here and expanding, uh, it really, really makes a, a, such an enlightenment to know that it's not really that complicated. So, I think the best thing to do is to do more research, read your book, you know, ask more questions, um, and then uh, reach out to Don because uh, Don, uh, can can we show your um, your contact information here, uh, Ferdy, uh, the third page? Yeah. So very simple. This is Don's email address and his phone number. Don had been practicing since uh, the 80s, 90s that he has been here. And he also published that book that became very, very popular and uh, so much in demand because it has a lot of links and a lot of updated information. So email him if you want a copy of that. He has a digital copy of that book. And uh, feel free to reach out to Don. And next time, actually, I'm going to have another episode that uh, I will have Lorraine come in here and talk a little bit more on her side, being an immigrant lawyer, uh, a lawyer here in United States, having offices in Canada, New York, 
Mexico, and Malaysia. So um, thank you, Don, for um, for uh, your time and. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you for having me. And then uh, uh, reach out uh, to uh, uh, Mrs. Agbayani, okay, because okay, uh, she is very, very active in the local community, and uh, okay, uh, uh, she's a very good friend of mine. So okay, uh, whatever she asks me to do, I'll do. Okay, I'll see you. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Hopefully next time we can have you live here, person to person, face to face here in Los Angeles. You know. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Soriano, for uh, having me. Also, okay. Uh, uh, you know, like uh, I look forward to uh, uh, keeping up with what you're doing, okay, especially on your business. Okay. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. All right. So uh, that's uh, a little piece of uh, information for you. You know, I know there's a zillion of different ways. Uh, we have different visas here that you can apply for, but um, L1 and EB2 might be something that you want to zoom in. And uh, especially if you are from Philippines or other countries, that may want to come in here to the United States and um, expand your business, bring your children, bring your family and send them to school here as a resident and rather than a foreign student. So anyway, um, that's it. Uh, take it away, um, Ferdy. Libre yung metan sa tata sa exchange rate? With Bayani Pay, mas secure na, mas mura pa. Ang Bayani Pay ay bank-to-bank -bank transfer na walang middleman kaya mas maaasahan. Sa registration, kailangan lang mag-scan ng ID at mag-selfie para sure na ikaw talaga yan. At pag nag ka na ng bank account, huwag kang mag-alala dahil di namin ni store ang bank details mo. Sigurado na darating ang remittance mo dahil kompleto ang information ng iyong recipient. Remit na with Bayani Pay! All right, welcome back. Thank you so much. Uh, now uh, I would like to be. I, I I would like to talk now about the other way, how to invest in the Philippines. So um, there's a lot of baby boomers right now that are retiring in the United States, and most of them are not really that ready, or they don't have enough cash flow to be able to afford to retire 100 percent. So. Here is an option for you, whether you are a Filipino, Filipino-American, or a foreigner. Uh, this is something that I would like to share with you, an option. I know that there's a lot of people who are retiring in Puerto Rico, in Belize, in, uh, in um, uh, Spain, you know. So now I just want to let you know that the Philippines is also becoming a very popular destination for retirees and even digital nomads. Okay, just because of the way the island is, how they explore the island, how beautiful uh, the countryside is. So to that, today, my topic is buying real estate in the Philippines. So I'll just give you a little bit of an overview of that. And then later on, I'll bring on um, Hazel from Ayala Land and we'll have a little example. So me, why am I doing this? I can easily sell property here in Beverly Hills, Los Angeles, and, um, you know, get just get my commission, right? But for some reason, 10 years ago, you know, being a, a licensed uh, agent for since 1988 and have done residential sales and mortgage in the Bay Area in Sacramento, um, then 23 years ago, it, it, uh, it tickled me on helping people who wants to have alternative to go to the Philippines and retire? So um, that's the reason why I am doing this. And I'm going back and forth the Philippines, trying to see how I can usher and um, help some of uh, my Kababayans on how to sell their property there, extrajudicial and all that, um, and also invest, leveraging the property they have here, leveraging and uh, get a secondary home in the Philippines or also invest in the Philippines for some business. Okay, so, so my objective is, again, helping you retire and leveraging in real estate ownership. So as early as 1988, 
when I was do selling real estate and also doing the mortgage, it was such a challenge to me. And also um, it gives me such an inspiration to help a first time home buyer get the first home without minimal, with a minimal down payment. And I always tell them, young guy, young couple, I say, if you really, really want it, doors will open. Another job will come in, another opportunity will come to you, and maybe a gift from somewhere, you know, maybe your family can help you. So there's always a way to, to get into that objective, okay? So it's just a matter of making sure that you have the desire. So with me over the years, because I was doing also mortgage and I was doing real estate, residential real estate, I used to do workshop. I like doing workshop. I educate and I assist on using real estate and use your equity once you have them to leverage and ultimately to help you retire and make your dream come true. Okay. So um, it doesn't start only when you are in your 20s. It also can start when you're in your 60s or even in your in the middle age. So in the mid midstream of your career. So we our career or our lifetime can be there's an ups and downs. Okay, and there's always a beginning and an end. So here, I, I'll give you some key points in buying the Philippines because buying in the Philippines is that you get a, 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 a chance to, to, to own a land, a property with a minimal down payment with a smaller amount of money. Okay, now, if you're a foreigner, you are prohib prohibited from owning a land in the Philippines, but you can legally own a residence. Okay, so the Philippine Condominium Act allows the foreigner to own condominium units as long as 60% of the building is owned by Filipinos. So if there is like 500 units in one building, you know, then as long as there's 60% of that is owned by Filipinos, then 40% of that you can buy, you know, you can buy 10 units, you can buy 20 units, or you can buy one unit. Yeah, so that is the good thing about it. And if you want to buy a house, you can consider a long-term lease agreement with a Filipino landowner because technically, uh, if you are a foreigner, you cannot own a land. You can lease a land. That's one thing. So to get around it, you can do a long-term lease like 25-year, 30-year, or 50-year from a Filipino landowner. Okay? So you can also purchase a property through the corporation provided its ownership is 60 percent or more um, by Filipinos. So if you want to open a McDonald's there or um, like a Home Depot there, a, a branch or something something similar to that, then you can buy the property for that uh, for that business, you know, and then um, it can be uh, owned 60 percent of this can be um, you, you can have um, partners that owns the 60 percent and you can own the 40 percent. Okay, so buying a condo is really lucrative in the Philippines. It's not the same as buying a condo here in, in the United States. There, we have what you call pre-selling. So usually a condo project would be finished. Uh, they're going to start it from, from now and finish about four or five years. So what they do is they pre-sell the units. They show you the plan. They show you where it's going to be. And they will have some presentation. And one, as long as you can put down, like, let's say they, you put 10% of the price today of the, of the you know, the, the pre-selling um, uh, price, then um, the other 10% to complete your 20% down can be spread during the time that the project is being constructed. So that 10% can be spread to four to five years, or even sometimes there are some developers developers that are even spreading that to seven years, depending on the project that they have. So the 80% balance at the end of the purchasing term, you are allowed to, uh, it allows you to realize the increase of value during the construction, right? So during the time from one to five years, the value of that property of that unit is going up, going up, and you are part of that. You, you are realizing that increase. So once you get to that 80%, then you can get a loan. Um, like um, condo can, uh, you know, you can, you can get a loan whether here or in the Philippines, okay? So 
the condos, they range from 21 square meter to 250 square meter um, or uh, about 60000 to $450,000, depending on the developer and the location, of course, you know. So um, also, if you are a foreigner, there is also what you call a long-term lease. So, um, oh, no, no. I, I mean, this long-term lease is if you want to rent it out. The good thing about it in the Philippines is that you can do a long-term lease and get prepaid um, up front. So if you're renting today, if you're renting it to a tenant, that tenant has to pay you the first one year before they even occupy it. And sometimes when you get the condo or, or the property, it's bare, nothing on it. The only thing that it has would be the plumbing. It has bare walls. It has a sink for plumbing. That's it. And um, it's the tenant usually who would finish it and putting all the insulation, you know, the air conditioner and uh, whatever else they want to upgrade the property you know, uh, while they are there. And there's an expats who stays there for about even five years or so and uh, lease the property to you. So that's another way of um, investing in the Philippines. Okay. So now with regards to buying a home, uh, it's a little different because as we said, you know, you cannot, uh, if you are a foreigner, uh, if you're a foreign national, you can only own the, the house, but you cannot own the land. Okay. So uh, the average price per square foot uh, in a city center nationally is about 207, 2750 per square feet. And uh, that means that a 1,200 square foot home would be like close to $250,000. So foreigners, they can do a long-term lease, as I said earlier, and have an agreement with a um, Filipino landowner. So if the landowner lives here and they, and they want to rent their home for five years, 10 years, you know, uh, you can do a long-term lease with them, you know, as a foreigner. Uh, you can also purchase a property through a corporation. You know, you can set up a corporation provided the ownership is 60% again or more by a Filipino citizen um, then uh, you can do that. Or a lot of people also um, do it through marriage. So if, if your um, wife or husband is a full Filipino citizen, then you can own uh, a house and lot there and own different properties because of uh, one of you uh, is a Filipino uh, citizen. Okay. Now, with regards to lending, um, I just want to give you a quick tip here that uh, we have a bank, Philippine National Bank in Los Angeles, and they can extend a loan for a residential property in the Philippines with the loan processing and servicing done here in the United States in Los Angeles. So sometimes that can be a challenge where you buy a property on the other side of the world and you have to deal with the paperwork, with all these uh, uh, documents. And um, if you can do it here, you know, like with Philippine National Bank, you can do it here and they don't have the, they follow the, the, the code of ethics and practice here in the United States. Like for instance, the age and the, uh, and the race and, um, you know, all, all the different uh, uh, requirements, you know, parameters of lending here in, in America, they have to adapt them. So in the Philippines, if you are 45, 50 years old, it's harder for you to get a loan. You have to get a loan that is a shorter term, you know, like five-year loan or or 10-year loan. But here in with the Philippine National Bank, you can go amortize it for 20 years, even though you're 70 years old, as long as they, you can prove that you can make payments on it. Yeah. So in summary, once you pick the general area where you want to settle down, it can be helpful to work with an experienced real estate agent who can show you various properties, okay? So don't just go to one place, you get excited, you went to Cebu, you went to Palawan, oh, I want to live here. It's better that you study it, you stay there, you visit it, or maybe stay it for about 30 days or even a few months, you know, different times of the year before you say, oh, okay, I want to live here, you know, before you do that. Um, an agent, 
you know, a real estate agent, a local real estate agent, or even an agent here, you know, like me who goes back and forth or some agents who are really familiar about Philippines, they can help you narrow down the choices and they can provide you general guidance throughout the process. So that's the main thing that I would like to tell you is that if you have somebody here who is more knowledgeable, who is also who's knowledgeable also with the, the topography and the and and the the climate in the Philippines on real estate investment, that's the best thing that you can do. Okay, uh, an agent can help you understand the rules regarding property ownership and what you can and cannot purchase as a foreigner and what it is that um, some people are also asking about dual citizenship. There's also good, it's also good to be a dual citizen. If you were born in the Philippines, became a citizen here, and you want to own properties there, it's always a good idea to be a dual citizen. It opens a lot of doors, okay? So anyway, that's, that's all for now for me. And um, uh, I think we have something to show you again right now. All right, thank you. So at this portion of our um, program, I would like to bring in uh, Hazel. Uh, she is from um, Ayala Land International Sales. Uh, luckily, she is again here in United States, in California with her team. Um, I am part of her team. <laughs> as a marketing partner of uh, Ayala Land. And right now, she's in the Bay Area. Last week, she was here in Los Angeles. So they're doing their road shows. Uh, they were also in Las, uh, uh, Las Vegas. So what Hazel does and her team is, what well, they, they put together uh, an event and, you, and they invite people who are really interested in finding out how to invest in the Philippines and particularly with Ayala Land because Ayala Land is, as you know, is our number one developer in the Philippines and we take pride of that. So, um, Hazel, can, can, uh, can you share with us what's going on right now? Hi, SP. Hi, Ferdinand. First of all, I'd like to thank you again for inviting me today. Yes, we have been very busy since the time that we started visiting the U.S. this 2023. Um, this quarter will really be hectic. In fact, um, you're right. I was I was just there with you last weekend. And the next day, we had to go to Vegas to meet a group also. And now I'm in the Bay Area starting our activities here because we really have a lot of interested um, Filipino Americans who wants to invest in the Philippines. That's why we want to continue to give the right information and be able to um, provide all the information that they need so that when they go back home, they're able to choose from the current and the latest properties that we have. So what's going on? We're, we will be... Um, in different areas, my team and I will be, um, a group will be in San Diego for Sunday presentation while I'll be here in Fremont um, this coming San Sunday also. And the following weekend, um, I'll also be uh, in another presentation here in South San Francisco and go the next day to San Diego to meet a lot of Filipino Americans also in in that part of California and to continue the rest of our presentations in country in in San Diego and uh, also in back in Cerritos. Now, um, just to also add uh, to what you have shared today, SP, you know, there's really a lot of good news that's happening in our country. That's why having all of these property choices with our company is very exciting. Um, uh, thankful. I'm very thankful that you are really campaigning about the your Balik Balik program, which is very, very, um, very exciting for someone who would really have the best of both worlds. That's why having uh, and being in our residential properties with Ayala Land, um, you can definitely 
achieve that goal of your Balik Balik uh, program for an individual who wants to retire in both um, the U.S. and in the Philippines. Um, definitely, um, I'm, I'm happy that you were able to also see our event last weekend and um, you have been with us for, for quite some time already. And um, we see that fulfillment um, being able, I myself have been um, uh, servicing a lot of Filipino-American families and they have really enjoyed a good opportunity investing with our company in terms of our properties back home. So thank you very much again. And um, uh, I'll thank give you. you back the floor, SP. Salamat. Thank we'll you. see you thank again. Thank you, Hazel. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, uh, folks, today I talked to you about um, how to get to United States, you know, if you're Filipino or you have a Filipino family or a foreigner who wants to come in here and invest. Um, we have the uh, all the different visas that can help you. And also the other way around, where we, if you are a retiree or an investor and you are interested on investing in Asia, because Southeast Asia is going to be really the next, I guess, uh, big thing, you know. Uh, so um, then uh, I, I just want to let you know that whether or not, whether you want to move in here or you go invest somewhere else, it is always a cherry to have to own real estate. And that's what I do. I help you leverage on your real estate. If you don't have real estate yet, if you don't have a home yet, I can help you as a first time home buyer. There are different grants, there's different ways. No, no program is set in stone. It's person to person. It's based on your situation. It's based on your motivation. And it's based on you know what is out there available for you and of course the market and a lot of people are stuck with the market the rate ever since you know uh, when i started 1989 we're stuck with the rate we're stuck with um you know how much is the interest rate and, uh, and and all that and actually if you think about it since 1988 that i was in real estate until now you know the properties have gone down uh, has gone up from 150 to 2 million, you know, and more. And the interest rate has gone down from 18% all the way to 2.5%. And now we're starting to creep up. So right now, if you are going to be in 7%, it's a mindset. There's always a way to, to, to get into that house. So let me help you leverage on what you have, what your motivation is, and when there's two or three people who are thinking for you, a lender, a realtor, and you, you know, and maybe your family can back you up, there's always a way to get to get what you want. Okay? It's the most, most important thing is the motivation right there. So, Ferdy, is there anything else that we would like to discuss together? How do you, What do you think? You know, I really miss Lorraine, uh, Attorney Lorraine. I was really looking forward to her presentation. In fact, uh, when I was at the Beverly Hills Chamber Mixer uh, last Tuesday and I showed the, fly the flyer, a lot of people were really, really excited about our show. So I told them that we're going to have another um, episode uh, bringing in uh, Attorney Lorraine again and see what she can um, contribute because she's a lawyer. Uh, an immigration lawyer and very, very aggressive and hardworking. As you say, as you see, she was at the border of Mexico trying to usher a client here. <laughs> You're in mute. I guess I got used to not talking, so I put myself <laughs> mute. But you know, in spite of the last minute thing, because that's showbiz, I guess to a certain degree with with uh, attorney Lorraine. Uh, I, yeah. I was also looking forward to that because many, many of the people that were, um, you know, that liked the, the uh, what do you call it, the posts on Facebook, they mm -hmm. really were asking, they liked it because with all the people that I'm trying to help with uh, Philippine manufacturers, the relevance to it, and, and I think that's the reason why a lot of them wanted to watch, see it is because a lot of them really were thinking about investing in some real estate in, in the U.S. also, right, especially mm -hmm. with the L1 visa. So, you know, in spite of that, I think um, 
Don Nepomuceno also did a good job in explaining at the last minute. So we want to thank him for yes. for uh, being a in. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he did it the last minute, folks. Uh, it, you know, the reality was is that he, he's very knowledgeable, but still, uh, again, he did it at the last minute. So that takes a lot of uh, preparation normally when you go on a show and really make sure that you're providing content that it's, that it's uh, you know, relevant. And he did his best to do that. And I thank you for that, uh, Don. Thank you. And then also for Hazel. Um, I love this combination that we're trying to form here so that we really want people to not think of Emporium as just a, a place for a product to be displayed. And, mm -hmm. and create as an incubation. But again, that's the reason why we added on that part where it says uh, global business center, because what SP is trying to do for everyone here is that I, I wanted Emporium to have a, an expert that could really understand not only the US market, but really also because what she says, balik balik, right? Going back and forth. Balik balikan. So, balik balikan, yeah. yeah. So, so to me, what's happening is that I told Espy that there's a lot of people visiting the Philippines now that are, when they come back, they wish they could stay there longer. And sometimes those, I want to stay there longer, uh, amounts to, okay, I want to buy a real estate there. And that's where I said, we need to, to create content or we need to have a trusted advisor to do that. And mm -hmm. you've been doing an, an amazing job, uh, SP. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I just came back and I'm, I'm leaving again next month. And of course... Even if we live stream, I can live stream from from the yeah. Philippines, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, we can have a different background. That's why I told you make sure that you you maybe get a get a really nice uh, um, you know suite or uh, overlooking the city, and people can see how amazing the Philippines oh, yeah. is, right? In terms yeah. of that. Oh yes, yes. I'll do that next time. That's a good idea. Yeah. 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 Because you know the thing that I want everybody to to you know to understand as they watch this or watch it later is that we're really you know if you're a Filipino American maybe you've visited the Philippines once or twice and now all of a sudden you're rediscovering your culture and you really want to get an idea how that is it's really important that you get a perspective on how to to do business in the Philippines and SB knows how to do that and but she's also very aware of your uh, you know your the way you do business here so she has the best of both worlds and i'm not just saying that because she's part of the content i mean because i'm actually appreciating that because you know that my 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 take on all of this is that i don't know you know even though i promote philippine products here there's still a lot of nuances that you need to understand and how to buy property in the in, in the in the in the philippines so that's why i know how to buy property here no problem right but still there's a little nuances that SP can provide. So that's why it's so invaluable, not only for SP and for you to talk to SP, but I'm excited because she's part of the, the Emporium, you know, project and what we're trying to do as far as bridging Philippine made products, services and investments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, just last year, we I started zooming in into assisted living just because it's a, it's part of senior housing, you know, as a senior mm -hmm. real estate specialist. Yeah, I would I, I, I have been catering to a lot of uh, seniors uh, talking about reverse mortgage, talking about downsizing, Prop 19, you know, all these things. But um it's, it's important also to know that there are a lot of investors that are looking into Philippines now as also a place where they can do retirement. You know, there's a lot of retirement communities that are being built there, you know, uh, considering the cost of retiring here to re retirement facilities, it's quite a lot. So anyway, uh, with no further ado, I'm, I'm really uh, happy for this episode. Uh, we miss... Um, uh, attorney Lorraine, but uh, we look forward to having her next time. So you guys there, if you are looking forward to uh, uh, listening to um, to an immigration lawyer, uh, we will have that next time. Uh, I will let you know when that's going to be. And uh, thank you so much for this show. I really appreciate Ferdinand for doing this because this portion of hosting and putting all these things together, that's not that's not my strong point. My strong point is just to talk and 
you know, reach out. You're, to you're just there to to look, you know, to be knowledgeable and look lovely, SB. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so I don't want to say bye bye to everybody too, but uh, I want everyone to keep watching the you know Emporium live selling uh, special editions because again, it's important that we continue this this bridging of the countries in terms of whether, like I said, whether it be investment services or products. So again, thank you, SP, for supporting yeah. us and giving yeah. us your brand in terms of trying to create this. So you yeah. have the last word and then I'll go ahead and end it. Yeah, well, one thing is this is recorded. We, it's recorded and Ferdy has a YouTube channel. So you can always find that. And we are all, uh, if you want to listen to it again over and over, we have past episodes that you can also listen to. Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, yes, it is recorded, Roy. So, uh, yeah, you can uh, reach out to Ferdy and get the link, but it is on YouTube. Okay? Thank you. Goodbye. It's a beautiful day. No worries today. Cool breeze outside my window. This is the